What's up guys, this is DDP. For the first time since the stretch of February to March in 2011, the Dallas Mavericks have won 9 out of 10 games. They are on a serious roll right now. And as we've come to see, they've shown a lot of resiliency as well. It's not just blowout victories like we've seen in more recent history. You're also seeing them show gutty wins, complete team wins, as was the case tonight. Now, the Timberwolves came into this game 7-2 and two on the road. They are a better team than I think a lot of people have quite picked up on to start this year. A lot of uh, tough-nosed defense. Uh, you got Wiggins playing, basically looking no longer like a bust and actually looking like he could be a quality player. He had three or four defensive plays tonight where he was blocking guys' shots. I think it was he capped a dodo. Uh, shot at the shot clock at the mid-range and then swatted his three the next trip down the court uh, he got Justin Jackson swatting his three at one point and yeah he when he wants to actually apply himself you see what made him the the hit prospect or perceived to be this hit prospect coming out of the draft and hadn't really worked for him to this point but you saw flashes of it tonight it looks like for this season he's also playing at a higher level again which is good for Minnesota Carl Anthony Towns was also a beast in this game, and that those two gave Dallas problems, but it wasn't just them. You had the Timberwolves in general. They kind of weathered some early offensive struggles in this game. Like, in the first quarter, they were sitting about four minutes into the game at, I think, three points, and they, they replicated that then in the second quarter, where it's like from the 29-second remaining mark of the first quarter – about four minutes into the second quarter, it was the same kind of struggle where they just weren't getting where they wanted. Dallas was really controlling things, and that that was very much to the Mavericks' advantage. Unfortunately for Dallas, Minnesota seized all of the momentum late in that second quarter, and as a result, they went into the half with the lead instead, and Dallas kind of looked a little bit, not shell-shocked, but you kind of, you kind of saw what looked like, okay, this could be an understandable slip up for the Mavericks. Like, they've been red hot. They've been running through all these teams. They've had these gutty wins and everything like that. It's the second night of a back-to-back. -back. You kind of saw where you're like, you know, they came out hot, and then Minnesota snatched the momentum away from them, and you kind of understood, like, this might be one of those games where they just don't have it. And credit to Rick Carlisle. He leaned heavy on the bench in the second half, particularly the end of the third quarter and most of the fourth quarter. I mean, this this was a really complete team victory for the Mavericks. You had a lot of guys showing out here. First of all, Dwight Powell, first name on the board here. He Now, he ended up leaving the game in the fourth quarter. Looked like he was in excruciating pain with a left arm injury, and that was in a collision with Porzingis as he fouled Andrew Wiggins. Uh, Wiggins but he had... 14 points in the first quarter. I'm pretty sure that's like his career high for like any half. And he pretty much did it in the first quarter. He ends up with 24 points on, I believe, perfect shooting from the field. He looked like a very different player out there. Yeah, 9 of 9 from the field, 2 of 2 from 3, 4 of 5 at the line. So not perfect, but still. He looked like a different guy out there tonight. He was playing with a lot of energy, a lot of aggression. You saw the impact he was making. So hopefully he's turning a little bit of a corner now. He might be breaking through in a way kind of like Tim Hardaway did before him where he's at this rock bottom and the whole fan base is wanting to tear his head off. And then suddenly he hits a hot streak and he sustains it for a little while because now this is a couple straight games for Powell that I thought were pretty quality. And this obviously being a high bar set in that regard, the fact that he was having to go against Towns and pretty much canceled him out. Towns with 26 points, 9 rebounds, 7 assists, 10 of 19 from the field, 3 of 5 from 3, 3 of 4 at the line, 1 block, 1 steal, etc., etc. Dude's a beast. But the fact that you, using Powell, were able to basically offset that almost entirely is pretty, pretty impressive in this case. Uh, free throws kept Minnesota in it early on in the second half. Dallas was able to kind of steady things a little bit. They fell behind by double digits a few times. It looked like they were constantly in trail mode. Every time they would start to get real, like right at the cusp of completing this comeback of tying the game up or even taking the lead, something would happen and it would swing momentum back to Minnesota's way. One of those times you had Luka driving for the tying basket. Actually, it would have cut it to two. And then instead, 
Minnesota comes down and splashes a three because Luka doesn't get the foul call. So Minnesota gets a five-point swing there. But then, oh, look, Luka's also teed up. Now they get an extra point out of it. And so you had things like that where you just looked at it and you were just like, yeah, this might not be the night for the team. But you know what? They got it done. Powell was a beast. I know he's not a bench player, but he was a beast in this game. Best game of his season thus far. Luka, a little bit of a ho-hum night, but also... 32 minutes, not big. I have it there as 21, po- or 21 points. He actually had 22 because of a free throw at the very end. 22-7-6 and six was Luka's stat line. Uh, but yeah, Luka, pretty, pretty ho-hum night for the most part. Only one of eight from three, but he did make a big three late in the game. Dallas, Dallas got things going because of that bench unit. It's because they started out abysmally shooting threes throughout the game. They were taking a lot of threes. Minnesota was basically baiting them into it. And Dallas went from... here. here this is this is from Eddie Sefko on Twitter. This uh, exemplifies the momentum swing from when Dallas looked like they were in total control to, holy crap, this has gotten away from us. They were up 45-32 in the second quarter. They then trailed at that point, at the time he's tweeting, 73-62 uh, with KP going to the line. That was a 41-17 run by Minnesota. And it felt every bit like a like a just painful bludgeoning for Dallas. But even still, in the end of the third quarter, once you had to have Luka and KP and them go to the bench, the bench unit comes out and they spur early on in the fourth quarter a 15-4 run that completely flips the game on its head. Dallas, uh, as Bobby Corella points out, started 4 of 27 from 3 but ended up making, I think, seven of nine threes in the fourth quarter. I mean, just completely flipped the trend on its head. KP had a big three. Luka had a big three. Maxi had a big three. You had Brunson with his best game of the year, bar none. 16 points, 14 in the fourth quarter. Perfect shooting in the fourth quarter for Brunson. Uh, He took over, and when Rick finally did put back some of the starters, uh, he ended up having to – he took out Maxi in favor of Dwight, and then Max – or then – Dwight immediately got hurt, and so Maxi went back in. But I like that he left out at the end of the game. He left Brunson out there with him. He left a mixture of it instead of just saying, hey, send back in the starters. He had Luka, he had KP, he had Brunson. Uh, you had Maxi out there as well. And uh, I think Dodo was probably the other guy out there for his defense in that regard. So really, really quality move there by Rick. I think this was a master stroke because – you keep your minutes low and very reasonable for all of your main guys, Luca and KP specifically. Your bench sparks you. You build them up a little bit. And this is a win that now, this is one of those games where you kind of flex your muscles a little bit in terms of the complete team aspect. Because this is a game that Dallas, on the strength of Luca alone and its starters, were not going to win. Luca was not having a great game. KP was not having a great game. They were getting whooped defensively. Luca was a minus 16 KP a minus 15. Tim Hardaway, he had a rough game, seven points. Not a rough, rough game, but like a rough game. Uh, Seven points, three rebounds, two of eight shooting, one of five from three. He was a minus 12. Powell was a a bright spot for Dallas there, 24 points. Dodo, only four points, although he did uh, get a couple good baskets, including a thunderous putback jam. Uh, I think that was in the early fourth quarter at that point when Dallas was still climbing up that mountain for the comeback. Curry, a ho-hum night, 28 minutes, 8 points, 4 boards, 3 assists. 0 for 4 on 3, though. Um, He must have had his foot on the line on 1, because that seems like I remember him hitting 1. But even still, Maxi, he had some moments there. 12 and 5 for him. Brunson, 7 of 8 from the field, 2 of 3 from 3. That, that was what powered it. I don't know where Jalen Brunson has been for Dallas to this point this year. Uh, he mentioned after the game that he had a, an old high school friend pass away in the last week, and that was he seemed a little bit choked up about that, just kind of reflecting on it. So uh, I I don't know. It sounds like for at least one game, it kind of lifted him up a little bit. You know, playing in someone's honor will sometimes do that for you. So uh, this is um, this is a quality comeback win for Dallas. Again, they've won nine out of ten games for the first time since late February to early March of 2011, the championship year. Uh, they improved their home record, I believe, to seven and four on the year. Minnesota, again, even though Minnesota was three and seven at home, 
They're seven and two on the road coming into this game, so now seven and three. Minnesota has been just as good of a road warrior team as Dallas was when we were talking about this going into the New Orleans game the other night. So there's a lot to look at in this regard and say this is a quality win. Like this is a win that you. It, it certainly wasn't a given. And so the fact that you were able to earn it, and especially in the way that you earned it, I think has a lot of power behind it. So Dallas is 15-6 and six now on the year. Uh, again, half a game back of... Well, this still shows them listed as that. I guess because the Nuggets probably have a game tonight. Uh, Dallas still showing at the four seed, half a game back of the two-seeded Clippers. And uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot to look at. So the, the Timberwolves are the seven seed right now. You had the, the eight-seeded Suns the other day. And there's a lot, there's a lot for Dallas that seems to be going right right now. Um, you have this tremendous momentum behind them with their fourth straight win, and I don't, I don't know necessarily what what the uh, the upcoming schedule looks like overall beyond the scope of this week. But I do tend to think that Dallas is in pretty good position to continue building on it. In fact, let me look at that. Now, I'm kind of curious now that I'm mentioning the schedule. I know they got, again, on the board there, they got the Pelicans again for the last time, I believe, this year. That's back at the AAC next, and that is Saturday. They then have another game the next day, Sunday, against the Kings. That's a, that's a pretty good game there. Then you got at the Pistons versus the Heat, who have been a surprise team in the Eastern Conference. Uh, at the Bucks, that's going to be tough. And then you got another date with Boston. So yeah, the schedule's not uh you got a you got a chance to build on it a little bit more, but the schedule's gonna get really tough again here soon. Uh Miami's a tough game, Milwaukee's a tough game. I think Sacramento will be a very tough game as well. Even though it's at home, I think that's going to be a pretty tough game for Dallas. And yeah, then you gotta run into teams like Toronto again and Philadelphia again. Like there's a lot, a lot, a lot to look at here but the difference is this is the big difference between this year and last year or the couple years prior to that as well for the first time dallas is going into a stretch like this and as they showed us already this season going through a stretch similar to this they're more than capable of winning these games and i don't just mean winning a couple of these games i mean like they're capable of going in and winning a lot of these games the majority perhaps of these games and that is a really really special thing that uh has been missing from the DFW area for a while now, and that is the power of Luka Doncic, a generational player, Kristaps Porzingis as well. Speaking of KP, I mentioned earlier he had 19 points. He had a couple big plays late for Dallas offensively that really uh, put that away. He shot 7 of 15 from the field, 2 of 6 from 3, 3 of 4 at the line with a block. Uh, Dallas overall, 50% from the field against Minnesota. That is a quality night in that regard. I mentioned they started like 4 of 27 from 3. Well, they ended up 11 of 37. So at least a halfway respectable 30%. Minnesota, man, they shot 45% from 3. That was their their greatest weapon on this game. 17 threes for them, 17 of 38 for 45%. They also got to the line a little bit more than Dallas and shot it better. 23 of 26 for 88% for the Timberwolves compared to 18 of 23 for Dallas for 78%. Dallas has continued to be very good at not turning the ball over, just eight turnovers on the night, out-assisted the Timberwolves by one, uh, out-rebounded them by one as well, although they lost the offensive glass battle 15-13. Minnesota ends up with seven blocks compared to five for Dallas, and Dallas didn't commit many fouls at all. So Dallas, not a lot was working for them early on. This was a really lean-on-the-bench kind of game, like, they were doing fine, and then they hit that brick wall, it seemed like, midway through the second quarter, and things were just kind of ugly for about the stretch of uh, the rest of the second quarter and pretty much the majority of the third quarter before the bench really uh, was dialed in itself, was inserted itself, and just completely changed the complexion of the game. This is a game that you look at and you say, this is one that we certainly could have lost. Like This is one that we could have lost, and it would have been almost expected not like not like you're okay with losing it but like one that because of the way things were going it looked like on paper one that was setting up for that kind of defeat and instead the fact that you're able to show a lot of gu- uh, guts and intestinal fortitude and all that and snatch victory out of the jaws of defeat like this i think this is a very quality win for Dallas and i'm happy to say we've been saying that a fair bit this season 
this is a very good character building game and the more of these you can stack up the better the 2011 team had a lot of these i don't like to compare those two teams uh too often because i understand it's an it's a it's a ridiculous high bar and it feels like a lazy analysis but it is something to say that there was a lot of great chemistry a lot of depth and a lot of great character building victories for that team and at least in that very not deep analytical sense you do see some of those same trends with this team early on in the year so We'll see, but that's going to do it for my time, guys. I'm DDP. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the Dallas Prospect, leave a comment below, and remember, every legend was once a prospect.